The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. Coming to you live from Florida, Lakeland, Florida, Tampa, Florida, St. Pete, Florida. For everybody out there in the storm's path, please be safe. Boy, those evacuation zones. Uh, being in Florida, I'm a little bit inland. The storm surge, the winds, uh, just been bad on that coast, keeping everybody in my thoughts, especially those barrier islands, man, anywhere up and down the coast. This storm surge, depending where that storm hits, very serious. And the winds, of course, on that coast as well, especially in areas that have been battered so recently off of Helene, and we'll get into the storm in a little bit, but nonetheless, we got markets this morning picking things up in positive territory. We have the S&Ps up by 20 points, trading right now, up a third of a percent at 57.64. NASDAQ 100, we're up by about 65 points, a similar third of a percent, 20,057. Dow up by 52 points, about 10th of a percent in the positive, and you got the Russell right now, positive by two tenths, excuse me, one tenth as well, positive by two, two points. Crude, you talk about some volatility, man. How about it? We're up to $78.46 last night. We pair some of those gains to $75.51. Yeah, I'll tell you in Florida, folks, um, it is interesting seeing so much lead time to this storm, right? Sunday, everybody was out already getting ready, right? Things really accelerated Saturday on the storm, came into to the picture of, in terms of where it was going to be, how dangerous it could be. Yesterday, gas stations are out, right? So nowhere around me has gas anymore. It's remarkable because it's not really going to land until tomorrow. But Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right? The lead up to this, nonetheless, you got crude going from a price point of $66 up to $78. We pair some of those gains. We're up a buck seventy-two in crude right now. Now, we got some China action going on, driving commodities lower in the same essence of what's going on here. That's some of the action that we had in crude in terms of commodities trading lower on the China bull market may be getting a little bit of a pullback. We got gold holding up relatively well, though, only off two dollars at twenty six sixty four right now. We jumped to notes and bonds and the trend continues. We got lower price. We got higher yield and you got the tenure at four point zero five. 4.05. How's that? You talk about uh, a continuation of the trend. You take a look at the daily. We are right at that three eight two. I had been talking about this trend. We'll see where we go. It's a critical area. In terms of the nice round number of 4%, we're at 4.05, but we pulled back. Nice nice round number of the 10-year sitting at about 4%. And you're also kind of back to this critical area that you found a little bit of resistance at right at the beginning of the year. And this is where we pulled back to also on that August one as well. Now, you take a look at the two-year right now, 3.99. The 10-year, 4.05. So for what it's worth. The dollar index jumping over. As we have a little bit of higher yield, the dollar just holding on to the gains that we've had. You get the dollar index right now, up six pennies at 102.43. And you see the chop basically from where we were on Friday, just chopping around about 102.40. And that's where you move to right away on that jobs number on Friday. All right, we got to talk about a little bit of China because that's driving a lot of the action right now, man. We'll jump around to some of the equities and you talk about a pullback. Boy, we got the Hang Sang, folks, down 9.4%. Hang Sang, 9.4%. And it's not surprising when you have the likes of Pinduo Duo, right, down almost 10% to 139. You were all the way down to 132. We were at 155. We take a look at the daily. We're sitting at 139 right now. All things considered, we were just trading at 88, right, at the end of August. We were just trading at 100 September 23rd. You're still up 40% in Pinduo Duo from where you were September 23rd. So just volatility everywhere in China. They didn't get the stimulus they were hoping for. Uh, Baba, you jump over. Similar action for Baba. We're down about $8 on Baba. Not quite the percentage move for Pinduo Duo, but those markets getting slammed. And we jump over the headline. And yeah, there it is. Stock euphoria cools as traders reassess their stimulus bets. Yeah. So, um, they began trading Tuesday's session with a bang. They surged 11% 
as trading opened, and then guess what? Nope. The first move's not always the move that carries, as we know here in the U.S. as well, and things just tanked. You have the CSI 300 down 6% basically for the session. Hong Kong, as we mentioned, Hang Seng, yeah, down more than 10%. Whew, pretty remarkable, the pullback. The meeting underwhelmed our modest expectations and seemingly those of investors. Yeah, that's the deal, man. Anticipation of an opening pop had been building, giving in the rally, um, but reports of record amount account openings at Chinese brokerages in preparation for the Tuesday session in hopes that a press briefing by the nation's top economic planning agency will offer a positive catalyst. But Beijing is keen to revive equities as it does not feel compelled to abandon financial restraint to aggressively stimulate the real economy. Nonetheless, man, it's uh, a wild market over in China, and it's going to continue. And they're not getting as much as they hoped for. And, yeah, they are reacting. All right, we jump around to some other equities out there. You got Pepsi out with their numbers, trimming the revenue outlook as North American snacking lag. What's going on with you snackers out there for Pepsi? And they get back that loss, as in you drive down to 169, 165, excuse me. You got Pepsi coming back to basically flat right now. Oh, man, Kevin Hinks. He was a market maker in that Pepsi pit. And um, very low volatility on this stock usually around their earnings. This one, just like that. What'd you get? A 30 cent move? That's interesting. You jump over to the Analyze tab, right? Look at the move priced into their earnings, man. Right? You take a look at the simulated trade, what you got up here. Now, these have not reset. So this was the pricing as of the close of yesterday prior to their numbers coming out. You had an implied move by Friday's action of $5.44 in either direction. Of that $5.44 move priced into options that expire on Friday, about four seventy three dollars was geared around earnings. And what did we get as of now, right now, at least? We got about a $0.30 cent move to $0.40 cent move. So, yeah, always keep that in mind. I always remember Pepsi. Not a big mover on earnings, but nonetheless, you talk about their numbers and people are not snacking. Yeah, they lower the full year outlook for organic revenue. Pretty remarkable. You only get a 20 to 30 cent move, right, on something like lowering the full year outlook for organic revenue. That seems like a big one. Yeah, recalls related to Quaker Foods continued to weigh on the sales. Man. So they beat the estimates, but the revenue weaker than expected. They come in light on revenue. They beat by two pennies on earnings, and they guide down a little bit on organic revenue. Pepsi snacks and drinks drop this quarter. Demand. Yeah. Volume for both its food and beverage declined 2% last quarter. That's a pretty big move when you look at about the size of the company, that is. Organic revenue, which strips out acquisitions, divestitures, and currencies, rose 1.3% in the quarter. But net sales actually fell. And look at that. Quaker Foods. 13% slide. They got a recall with salmonella. They got some problems going on there. Frito-Lay, a 1.5% decline in volume. There's a lot of competition in that snacking market, man. Cheetos, Sun Chips, Stacy's Pita Chips. I like those Stacy's Pita Chips. Uh, nonetheless, you got Pepsi trading basically flat so far this morning with a positive market. We got the S&Ps. What are we, 60 points away from all-time highs right now? You got the NASDAQ 100. We check in on some of the bigger dogs out there. You take a look at Apple shares. Positive with the market this morning. Trading up by $3. And we got the S&Ps up by 23. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back. We'll talk a little bit of Roblox. Yeah, they're talking it in the den. Tommy likes this game. But Hindenburg, they're saying they're lying about subscribers. We got a lot to talk about. Don't go away. We'll be right back, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. Markets in positive territory, but Roblox, not so much. So quite a report out here um, from Hindenburg, the short seller, right? They put these reports out. They've got a short in this equity. So um, beware the messenger. They've got their bias, right? But it is interesting. Now, Tommy and his brother Landon, they love this game, Roblox. And it's a game that has many games within it, right? It's an application. It's a, um app that allows many different games. You can build them, etc., they do enjoy them tremendously. I'm always watching them, though, because it is something that you're in a social atmosphere. There's other players in the game. Um, we don't turn on the audio. You can put child stuff in there. They're always hitting you up for money and stuff like that. But kids love these games. Now, we don't pay for anything on there. But it is obsessive how much they're, they're prompting these kids for anything they want to buy. They want dollars, right, across the board. This app, I always talk about good screen time, bad screen time, not the best screen time. We keep this one to a little bit of a minimum when we can. Roblox, uh, not exactly educational. But it is remarkable when you look at what they're talking about here in terms of, so what Hindenburg says is that they've been exaggerating daily user and engagement figures to investors since it went public in 2021. And they accuse Roblox of giving priority to growth over measures that would better protect children from quote-unquote pedophiles and mature content okay the firm said its research is based on part on interviews it conducted with multiple former employees of roblox and first-hand experiences on the platform nonetheless you got a little bit of a trade lower now this equity man if you remember this was the most expensive gaming company in the world at one point when you had that run up towards the end of 2021 at 141.60 all the air came out of that equity down to 21.65 you've been chopping around you're still valued right now at Let's get it. $24 billion is that company. Um, but yeah. 
Whew. Man. Just reading some of it. I mean, it, it's pretty tantalizing, especially when Tommy's been using it. Going to keep an extra eye out there. Always do on that app, especially when you got other people on it, right? It's like a user, um, almost like a social aspect to things. Nonetheless, Robux, they are trading lower today. You're going to hear more about that one, man. It is a mammoth, mammoth um, app in terms of the amount of people that use that product. And they're inflating those numbers, though, is what they say. So we will see. All right, what else we got going on right now? Super microcomputer. Yeah, how about it, man? So yesterday, quite a day, soaring after the server company says it's shipping over 100,000 AI GPUs per quarter. You talk about it, man. Now, this thing has been particularly volatile. And we're continuing that run today. You're up by another $3.21 with the market right now. You started yesterday trading off at about 40. You're going to kick off today at 51. You back things up a little bit, though. And we are still well off that high at 122.90, man. For super microcomputer, you're trading right now at $51. You were as high as about $35 in 2023. But yeah, they make computers the companies use for servers, for data storage, websites, AI training models, and more. And yes, they are selling over 100,000 AI GPUs per quarter. The market likes to hear that. And yeah. Whew. And yeah, it sure could. That could translate into several billion dollars. You multiply 100,000 times any number, it's going to be a big number, man. Whew. So their new cooling product will allow data centers to spend less on hardware costs and cooling infrastructure for services that typically need to be running constantly. Yeah, liquid cooling. I mean, cooling is going to become a big deal. Energy is going to become a big deal as you get these data centers everywhere. Yeah, Supermicro said it recently deployed more than 100,000 GPUs with liquid cooling solution for some of the largest AI factories ever built. But as they say, still down dramatically from those recent highs for Supermicro Computer. Whew. Now, this one's interesting. I was reading this one last night. Check it out. This one is about new Sam's Clubs coming from Walmart, okay? And what's interesting is I talked about this yesterday a little bit. We jump over to Walmart shares. Walmart flat this morning. They have been on quite a run, though, from the low of $39 in 2022. It's almost a straight shot. Accelerated this year from 50 to 80, from 40 to 80, from where we were at those lows. So I've talked about I am a Sam's member, right? They have one out here in Lakeland. And I'm there often. I'm there for my gas. Not there for my gas right now because, boy, the long lines, if they even have gas, are um, pretty substantial, to put it lightly. But what's remarkable here is how they're transforming their stores. And it makes great sense, folks. As somebody that's adopted this technology early, okay, call me an early adopter of the scan and go feature. All right, Sam's Club is great. This is going to be the future, man. You open up your app when you go into the store. You scan any item. As you put it into your cart, sometimes I put five items in my cart and then I have to go scan them all, right? But in theory, the way to do it would be you don't have to count anything. You don't have to go back. Anytime you throw an item in your cart, you just scan it with your phone. It adds it to your checkout list. And then all you do is hit a couple buttons. It charges your credit card. It gives you some type of QR code that's your receipt that they can then scan at when you're walking out. You don't even have to go to the checkout. And I tell you, folks. At a place like Sam's, I went in there prior to Helene, okay? Not this one. So I'm already stocked up. And that is what's interesting is a lot of Floridians are already stocked up, but they should be, right? You went out, you got water, you got some stuff. Gas, of course, depletes. But it's right on the heels of that, so I don't have to go back as much. But what they're doing is it's going to be everywhere. This is the new deal. They're eliminating checkouts. And it makes sense, folks. I go into Sam's. I use this scan and go feature. And I walk out while everybody's in those big lines for the warehouses, right? That's one of the worst parts of going to a Costco or Sam's. Haven't been to a Costco in a while, so I'm not sure. But, you know, there's some big lines at the checkout, right? Everybody's checking themselves out. They don't have people checking you out with people bagging your groceries like Publix, right? That's part of the reason that you're saving money. You're going to a warehouse. You're doing it yourself. You're not getting bags. You're putting them in the cart. There's usually some decent lines. You scan it, you walk right past everybody else, and I say to myself, I can't believe all these people don't use scan and go. 
and they put items in their cart, and then they go spend 20 minutes that they don't have to spend at the checkout, right? Well, that's all going to go away. It makes sense. Um, yeah, the club is going to have no checkout lanes. So this is just starting. It's opening in a club in a Dallas area. You know, if you're into Amazon, man, I talked about it. Get a little Walmart in that portfolio, too, to make sure you're covered. There's a little bit of a hedge as Walmart is coming for Amazon's breakfast. They're coming for Costco a little bit, too. Costco, twice the size of Sam's. And meanwhile, they have the same amount of stores, I think it was, when I was reading this. Yeah, but look at this store of what it's going to look like, man. This is a complete transformation. They're going to have online-only items that you can scan the QR code, something like a 12-foot Christmas tree, right? Items that are too large. You want a sofa while you're there? Scan that QR code. Um, but in terms of expediting people, checkouts, all of that stuff, yeah, the idea is that over time we will be 100% digital engagement as a business. They're on the forefront, man. Everybody's going here, and it looks like they're going to be on the forefront. We'll talk about this when we get back. We'll talk some numbers. 86.2 billion in sales for Sam's. We'll be right back for the open. Or is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got S&P's up by 25 points right now on the open. We're trading at 57.71. All the markets in the green. Russell just barely by one point right now as that is the laggard. We got Bitcoin. The acceleration up to almost 65,000 yesterday, sitting at 62,800. Crude continuing to trade lower right now, off $2.25 at 74.89. You got China weakness weighing 
on some of those commodity numbers, um, prices out there. You got gold contract pulling back just recently. Look at this move, man. Just since I was getting ready for the show at 830, we're trading at 2672. We've dropped about $15 since that time. 2656, the lows overnight, 2647 for the price of gold. And we jumped to notes and bonds. And yeah, sitting pretty much where we kick things off. Checking in on Uber. Yeah, they're up a little bit right now, up by 1.1% with the market. They're going to give users options to hail only fully electric cars. They're launching their AI chatbot bot for EV curious drivers. EV curious drivers. Nonetheless, they're going to give you a million options, Uber, man. You want to take an EV vehicle? You want to take an AI vehicle? Right? They're going to give you all the options because everybody's not ready for everything yet. I think that's where you're seeing that go. Um, yeah, you're going to be able to have an EV preference that will let customers opt for fully EV by default whenever they hail a ride. So, yeah, you can see how you're going to get into the, those different options within that one platform. And all right, jumping back to Walmart. So this is interesting when you talk about it because this is the future, man. Walmart up by six tenths percent, quite a slide year, lower yesterday from 81 down to almost 79. They've been on t quite a tear recently and getting into the, some of those numbers where you look at, you know, the the possibility for Walmart to grow, they got some possibility, man. Sam's is a great, if you're not a member of one of these clubs, folks, whether it's Sam's or Costco, and you have a family of any sorts, if you buy any type of paper towels, I pay for my Sam's membership just by getting gas when I can, not even every time, but usually at Sam's. Just by getting gas at Sam's, I pay for the entire membership, let alone what I save. You know, we're talking about diapers, right? You got a family. We got young kids. Wipes, let alone the number of food, water, all that stuff that you end up buying there. Sam's does a great job. I was out here slamming Walmart when they weren't getting the job done versus Amazon. And I'm telling you, I spend a lot of time in there, the scan and go, the way they're transforming these stores, how they're going to do it. So they have the same number of U.S. clubs. Now, they're going to be in different locations, okay? For instance, Costco is now out here in Lakeland. Costco has one location somewhere in Tampa I think of course that's going to do bigger numbers when you put one location right in the middle of the hub versus something like Sam's their location is out in Lakeland still a lot of people but not as densely populated as the Tampa area nonetheless they have the same amount of US clubs roughly okay but Costco pulls in twice as much annual revenue that's an opening for Sam's it is straight up Sam's is talking about is taking in 86.2 billion in the most recent fiscal year. Costco, they're the juggernaut, man. And this isn't exactly like stealing, you know, I'm not saying that Sam's is gonna eat Costco's lunch, because Costco's great, man. Everybody loves Costco, right? But that is quite a gap for a company like Sam's that is doing a good job. They are going to be able to compete, man. You look at what is going on. You look at these stores. You look at my experiences. I'm telling you, it is a good deal. Yeah. Uh, Sam's Club has made several other key moves to catch up to Costco. They recently consolidated their private labels from more than 20 different labels into a single one, Members Mark, kind of like the Kirkland, right? It cut back on the number of unique items it sells, so it focuses on the proven and the popular ones, and uh, they raised some wages. Yeah, nonetheless, this is where they're going. They're going to have more space by taking out all the checkouts to facilitate e-commerce orders, okay? So the Dallas Area Club, which is what they're doing, this is where the transformation has taken place first, 6,000 square feet to fulfill e-commerce orders, okay? above the 1,500 square feet at other clubs. So they're going to add 4,500 square feet, and they're going to do it by expediting the checkout process. Now, you're going to have customers that aren't happy, okay? And the company said one in three members currently use Scan & Go when shopping in clubs. That's the first time I had heard that, and it's astounding because you wouldn't believe, you would, how many people sit at the checkout still. But I guess I don't see all the people that go through the checkout, right? But that means, you know, almost 70% of customers don't use that product, that technology that they're going to have to start using, okay? And then they take the anecdotal mom who's afraid of technology. You, I mean, these, these stories, it's like so character of things. Um, Tiffany, a mom and a Lyft driver from Dallas, she's eager to return to Sam's, but a little wary of the new technology, okay? She used to turn to the club for easy family dinners and supplies, but switched to Costco. 
uh, when they were closed because of a tornado. She's never used Scanago and said she hopes the new technology doesn't come at the expense of customer service. Sometimes it can get a little dicey. Yeah, sometimes technology can get a little dicey, right? Uh, nonetheless, folks, this is the future. It's super easy. If you haven't tried it, give it a try. You'll love just walking in and out. I mean, I did it before Helene. I couldn't believe it. Walked in. I was in Sam's for like five minutes, grabbed 10 different items, put them in my cart, scanned them all, got the receipt, checked out. I was gone. Uh, and then you add into it just the great business plan. They're going to be selling bigger ticket items at an affordable price, and they're going to be doing it online only because you can't pack a 12-foot Christmas tree into your cart at Sam's, right? You can't buy a, a couch at the same time. But you know what you can do you can scan the qr code and have it delivered all part of your purchase meanwhile they're adding 4500 square feet for shipping capacity for their online orders it's a big move and i think it's really gonna the um yeah it's always intriguing how i've always wondered why everybody isn't using that scan to go anyway it's the first time i used it folks i wondered i discovered how easy it was so this can be everywhere and imagine, now they have two people at the checkout, right? They scan your receipt. I think we all know how it works. And then they randomly select a few items within your cart to make sure you paid for everything, okay? That's going to be technology in a heartbeat, man. They're going to have scanners. They're going to see your items. They're going to check your receipt. There's not going to have to be humans at the front gate anymore. That is coming, to say the least. Think about the money that they're going to save when you have nobody checking out. People scan it on themselves. They scan it on the app. All that space gets cleared. That's... Costco's going to do this too. Okay, everybody's going to do this. But Sam's, they might be in the forefront there. Yeah, nonetheless, I found that interesting, especially because uh, I use it so much myself. Yeah. You jump to Apple. Some news from Apple out early this morning. Yeah, so they're talking about a ring. How about it? So Samsung has got a ring, and it looks like Apple says, we got to get in that business as, um, as well. Now, it's going to be interesting to see. What you can do with a ring versus what you can do with a watch. Now, I don't have my Apple Watch on today, but I do love my Apple Watch. I've talked about it before. Definitely, um, especially from a workout health perspective, right? You go on a walk. You go on steps. You go on the heart rate. Uh, you can see a lot of things in there that are pretty cool. Health has become a fundamental pillar for Apple. I would agree, man. There is huge openings there, but I wonder what health data you can pull from your finger that – versus what you can pull from your wrist, right? I don't know the fundamentals, but it seems like you can get a little bit more from your wrist than you can from your finger in terms of heart rate. I'm sure you can get heart rate. Technology is always going to be improving. But yeah, nonetheless, they're going to try and get a ring coming out. And when? you got to wait for it, though. 2026. Yeah, that's a long time. Um, when you're talking about almost a year and a half. I don't know if rings just yet. Rings will probably be how they track it. It's not going to be always. You're probably just going to put a little sticker somewhere on your body eventually, right? To monitor everything. All right, folks, s and is positive. We got the Dow and Russell rolling over to negative price territory. Stay tuned. We'll take a look at some equities moving this morning. Are you ready right back, to take folks. charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, 
taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got S&P's positive, NASDAQ 100. You're positive by 109. We jump over to DocuSign, up by 7.6%. So that equity is trading higher on the news that it's going to replace MDU in the S&P 500 mid-cap 400 index effective Friday. So that gives that equity a lift. We're up by 7.6% on DocuSign. You jump over to NVIDIA, powering higher. So you got super microcomputers saying 100,000 out there in terms of what they're playing. That's going to help all those stocks in terms of the chips and the AI. Um, and then you also have Foxconn saying the boom in AI still has some time to go. Yeah, man. Demand for Foxconn servers based on NVIDIA's upcoming Blackwell chip, which are on track to ship this quarter, is much better than we thought is out there from Foxconn. Everybody wants them, man, right? Yeah. You jump over to Microsoft shares right now. You got Microsoft up four tenths percent. You see the slide there on Microsoft at about 6 a.m. this morning. That had to do with a downgrade. Yeah, Oppenheimer. He said it was concerned about estimated losses at OpenAI of as much as $3 billion for the fiscal year 2025 on slow AI adoption by business. Not what you want to hear, but nonetheless, Microsoft positive on the heels of that news out there. Interesting. All right, we check back in on Roblox. Not that bad, man. Market, not believing it just yet. As in, you were much lower. You're still down 6.7%, I guess. Be careful on that one, folks, because I'll tell you. Again, just like, you know, listen to yourself sometimes. You know, I see this game. I see the way this game is with children. It's okay, but it's not some kind of holy grail that's going to be a trillion-dollar company right now. Okay, and seeing these allegations, because I never quite understand... I mean, maybe it's one thing, you know, if your kid, they want a little gift card, you give them a $25 gift card to spend on Roblox or something like that. And I know there's plenty of money that's spent on that company. It's valued at $25 billion, okay? But it's not the it's it's not the end all. It just doesn't quite compute in terms of why parents or kids or you know the money spent. It's just spent on on outfits, right? And and toys with anyway, for what it's worth. Uh, Roblox down by 6% so far this morning. What else we got? Let's see. Let's jump around some other equities. Wells Fargo. They get an upgrade from Wolf Research um, to outperform from peer perform. Bad news surrounding Wells is fully baked in. <laughs> Expectations are everything, right? Take a look at a longer term chart on this thing. Quite a rebound from where you were in the end of 2020 when things looked dire. We test that double top, though. Be careful, man. Up to 60 bucks. That is like a, a textbook double top at that $60 price level. We're trading right now at 57.46. Back to a short-term time frame. You got Walmart shares marginally higher right now. Check out Disney. Yeah, with the storm, it was a tough day for Disney yesterday from 95 to 92. You're sitting at 92.08 right now for Disney shares. And yeah, this storm. So let's talk about it. Why not? Ugh. 
Um, so we get another update, update from NOAA at 11. They update things every six hours. They're tracking the storm every single minute, of course. But, yeah, you talk about the path. It's dead set on Tampa right now. And, you know, it's going to hit somewhere on the coast. So it's like, you know, I'm just hoping for the best for the whole area right now. But look at that Tampa area, man. Potential for winds greater than 110 miles an hour. Seems like it's going to roll in in a Category 3. And when you look at the flooding, it's a tough deal, man. If that little Tampa nook catches a direct hit, it's going to be a tough one. So, you know, it's going to be a tough one no matter what where it hits with that wall of water just on the the southeast side of where that storm rips in. And it seems like it was maybe tracking a little bit south, but we're going to get a little bit of um, today's going to be a defining day over the next 12 hours by rereach tonight. We'll see where that's going to go, but keep us in our thoughts, man. Stay safe out there if you're anywhere near the coast, right? My place in Tampa, I always talk about I got a lovely duplex in South Tampa, hoping for the best, man. Um, but both those tenants, probably rightfully so, getting out of there for right now. Because the scariest part of all, right, you got winds. You got roofs that can get ripped off depending on the wind. It's not going to hit land, it looks like, as a five right now. But it's hitting as a three. You're talking about 127-mile-an-hour winds. you got a manufactured home. You're in a mobile home. Get out of there, period. You're near the coast where it can flood. Get out of there, period. The storm surge, depending on where the storm hits, could be 15 feet in Tampa. If you're in a one-story property, which many Florida properties are, one-story Okay, what do you do if you get 15 feet full of storm surge? You die, folks. Okay, so make sure you protect yourself. That storm surge, you're anywhere near it. You're, you know, Pinellas County, man. You're in those evacuation A. I think they're probably going to get B out there as well. But be careful, nonetheless, because it is a tough one. I keep pulling them up. We're at about 155 mile an hour winds right now is where they are. Is the most recent one. It Down from 180 is where they are. And, yeah, it's going to glance off the Yucatan Peninsula Tuesday before heading toward Florida on Wednesday. It weakened a bit. It might strengthen a bit. And then it's going to weaken again as it nears the Florida West Coast. And the path still to be determined as that path is still pretty large. And, boy, um, hopefully they get that debris off the streets. That is a job that is just uh, I'm sure they're going 24-7 right now to get that debris off the streets because it's a dicey scenario when you're going to have a storm blowing in at almost 130 mile an hour winds and there's just piles of debris everywhere all over Florida folks and different parts of the country but Florida is the one that's going to get hit right now so be safe out there to put it lightly right man dicey just want to get over that hump man Amazon shares up by six tenths percent today we check in on some of those Chinese stocks Pinduoduo down almost eight percent right now Baba down about seven percent right now as China didn't get the stimulus look at these gaps right just just mammoth volatility in China right now Microsoft holding on to the gains we got Nvidia trading higher up two percent over 130 jump over to AMD they're flat right now Intel shares down by about one percent to 2217 we check in on Tesla shares up by three tenths percent right now we look at the commodities crude continuing to drop check it out down 3.4 percent we're back to 74.48. That's almost right where we were on Thursday. All right, look at that. Up to 78, back to 74. Pretty affordable prices still for that price of light sweet crude. And the gold contract down about $6. We check out that dollar index, man. Yeah, just chopping around about 102.50, 102.45. And we check out that dollar index right now, DXY. Yeah, 102.45. And then yields to wrap it up. Excuse me, that's where I wanted to go. Yeah, discontinuing. Where is that R star? Where is the natural rate of growth, right? And you jump over to the yield. Yeah, above 4.05 right now. Not a bad yield on that 10-year. Check in on Pepsi on their numbers. Pepsi up by 78 cents. They get a lift on the open to 168. That's quite a – they must have had some – Light expectations. When they miss on earnings, they beat on revenue, and they miss on the forecast, they dive down. But I don't know what they said in the conference call, but they must have liked it. As Pepsi up 2 to $3 from when that conference call began at about 166 All right, folks, stay tuned. We got one more segment. We got S&Ps up by 23 points right now. So we're going to go live all day today, folks. The storm's not here yet, but we will be closed tomorrow is the deal. Okay, so we'll be live today. 
And yeah, um, then we're batting down the hatches tomorrow. We'll play it by ear by then. But we got one more day. We'll see where we go. S&P is positive. NASDAQ positive by triple digits. One more segment, folks. Don't go away. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. we got markets continuing to catch a little bit of a lift. NASDAQ 100 right now. We're back above 20,120. We're up by 133 points, almost 7 tenths percent in the positive right now. you got the S&Ps up half a percent. you got the Dow and the Russell barely in the red right now. We jump over to some of those tech companies. Google shares up by about 3 tenths percent. You jump over to Meta shares up by about half a percent. And you jump over to the headline from the journal today talking about breaking up is hard to do. How about breaking up monopolies, man? Um, yeah, antitrust officials way splitting Google as well as others out there is the headline. And you're talking about Meta, you're talking about Google, but we'll see what happens. Google's in the forefront, though. The Justice Department expected to submit a filing today that presents a federal court with a range of potential options from conduct restrictions to a breakup aimed at ending what a judge says was Google's unlawful monopoly in search. I mean, the battle's going to be on for this one, no matter what. 
I'd say they got more of a case to break up Live Nation than they do Google almost at this point. I've been using Chat GPT a lot more often for Google search. It is remarkable that they're finally going to break them up when they may just be losing that monopoly. The last breakup 40 years ago. It's not going to be easy, man, if they try and split up Google. In the long run, Google's going to be fine, okay? Yeah, they might not be able to use their monopolistic advantages. If they do get broken up to that degree, they're not supposed to be able to anyway because that hurts consumers. But they're going to be fine in the same way. Um, but, yeah, you got the head of the Justice Department's antitrust division. I mean, they have their agenda, of course. Uh, that earlier breakups were necessary to end and repair the harm from long-standing monopolies. It's hard to do on, on the back end of that, though, once it's happened. We'll see if it goes. They are quite a juggernaut, and we'll see who wins that battle. Yeah. All right, folks, look at this market. You can't hold it down. S&P is right now up by 30. You get the NASDAQ 100 climbing 150 points out there. NVIDIA? 130 up by more than 2%. You got Apple shares up by 1.5%. Amazon up by a full percent right now. Microsoft up by a full percent. Quite a day in the markets, folks. Thanks so much for kicking off Tuesday trading. Folks, stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up next. Stay safe out there. Okay, get what you need. Evacuate if you need to. Uh, not going to be on the air tomorrow morning. We'll be closed tomorrow. We'll see about Thursday, folks. But we got live programming today. Have a safe day. Have a great day, folks. And we'll see you hopefully on Thursday. All right. Have a great one, folks. Stay tuned for Basil.